Welcome to Geometry Nodes 101. In this session, we're going to be having a look at how to get things like vertex groups into our node tree, and also how to get attributes out of our node tree to use in shaders. For starters, I just have an empty file here. So I'm going to grab a mesh plane, I'm just going to scale it up, apply transforms, and let's subdivide this a few times. Maybe I'll do that again. Basically, just want to have enough resolution to actually, you know, weight paint just to get things started. I'm also going to add a vertex group here. I can leave the default name group. That is fine. Okay, let's add a geometry nodes tree. And I'm just going to do a very simple setup where we are weight painting the scattering density. So add a point, distribute points on faces. This is like our point distribute. And we want an instances, instance on points. Now for our instance object, I'm just going to use a mesh, a cube mesh, and I'm going to drop the size so that we can see individuals. Okay, so how do we get our vertex group in? Because previously we would have just used strings and things like that, or we would have selected an attribute on our distribute points on faces. However, now it's not so obvious. The way that we're going to do this, right, take your group input node, we're bringing data from outside the node tree in. So we use the input and the output nodes to do so. Let's take our new socket, I'm just going to plug this straight into the density. So right now we can see on our modifier, it says in here, density 10, and I can change this. But there is a button to the left. If I tick this, then we get an attribute input option. Now we can select, uh, it was group, just grab that. And now if I go control tab, go into weight paint mode, now you can see that we can paint this in. I should probably link up my original geometry so that I can see my weight painting, but you can see what's going on here. Now, this is not very dense. Right, and maybe I want to increase the density. So what I'm going to do is I'm also just going to add a math node set to multiply to multiply my density. Utilities, math. I can just drop this onto that noodle, set this to multiply, and I'm going to actually plug it into my modifier as well. So now I have a value here, which I can increase. So it really is as simple as this to bring your vertex groups in. It's difficult to find it. You know, you're not necessarily going to just trip up on this one. However, once you know it, it's not too bad. And you can see I can paint, I can paint whatever I want, change my weight and paint things out. So there we go. That is how we can paint with a vertex group. And of course, you can do anything that you want to do with your vertex groups or uh, like vertex color layers and things, bringing those in to the node tree, just using this. You can see everything that you plug into the front. If it can be a field, you have that option there. What about passing things out? Well, it's essentially the same. You can see we already have output attributes. And it says no group output attributes have been connected. I want to show you a little bit of a different example because I think this is actually very useful and hats off to BBBN19, Ben, for, <laughs> for sending me this one. I was doing this a little bit differently to create UV maps, but essentially we're going to be using our capture attribute node and some curves to generate UV maps on splines. So Geometry Nodes does not by default handle UV maps at the moment, although it will do further down the line. It's just Currently, it's not an option. I'm going to add a curve primitive Bezier segment, and we can see this here. I'm then going to use a curve, curve to mesh, right? And this is going to let us set a profile curve for our Bezier segment. Let's use a curve primitive, curve circle, plug this in like so, and I'm just going to drop the radius a bit there. Now, if I just come in here, let's have a look at the shader editor. I'm going to make a new shader, and I actually don't need this principal BSDF. So if I was to look at the UV map, and I go into rendered mode, and this is really important. EV now supports custom attributes, so if you are on a build of Blender from a few days ago, make sure you update. 3.0 beta is out now, so you can just grab the beta version. It supports custom attributes in EV, so very important. I need to assign this material to my curve object, so I'm just going to grab a material, set material node, and I can drop that in like this. Okay, we can see while I'm looking at the UV map, we have no values. So what we want to do is we want to create our own custom vector and pass it out. Really nice, easy way for us to do this is using Ben's method. And I'm going to show you that now. We're going to use the curve parameter. So the curve parameter is just a zero to one value along your curve. Basically, that's you say, you know, at zero, it's going to be the start of the curve. At one, it's going to be the end of the curve. And any value in between that lets you do things like sampling, it lets you do just so many things, right? Curve factor is a very useful node to get used to. And if we look at this here, diamond socket means it is a field being passed out. If I just use the curve parameter, 
at the end here where we're making our vector because this is what's being passed out here then it's not going to work because this is not a curve right we need to do it for our actual curves themselves and for this to be useful we therefore need to capture this attribute so grab your capture attribute node we can just leave the default set as they are so i can grab my factor plug this in to my value and i'm actually going to grab another one for my path so i have one to go around my object and one to go along my object just as you would with a uv map now because fields are computed by their context we can plug this into both we don't need two separate nodes and then let's grab a vector combine x y z and i can just join these up into my x and my y plug this on to the group output and now we can see that we have an output attribute on our modifier let's give this a name i'm going to call this one mapping and i can come back into my shader over here and we can't read this on the uv map we need to use the input attribute node so there is an attribute node for shaders and it just lets you pull in custom named attributes such as mapping in this case and if i view this well now we can see we have a vector there's a little bit of softness here this is just because of the resolution i could tighten that up by using more points you know just remember that this is not independently calculated from the vertices your resolution is defined by those vertices and you can see in my shader if i add something like a voronoi texture we do indeed get voronoi texture mapped properly to our thing so that's a really exciting way of working complete control over generating custom uv maps through your geometry node setups november is going to be crazy this year so there we have it this is how you can use your input and output nodes to bring data like vertex groups into your node tree or data like in this case uv maps out of your node tree a lot of options for you to get your teeth into now hope you're going to enjoy playing with the new tools that you have available join me in the next video where we're going to be setting up displacement and scattering so we're going to do a little lumpy field and uh, have a go at doing a proper actual setup see you there